This is episode 32 of the Talking Mac Podcast, WWDC Bounce Back. This was recorded in Atlanta, Georgia on June 19th, 2008. Enjoy this episode. And don't forget, if you have questions, email us at media at yahoo.com. All right, welcome to the Talking Mac Podcast. We haven't been back in a little while, that's because here at Technify Media Networks, we had a lot of other stuff going on. So we were waiting for WWDC to be over with to get back uh, with the Talking Mac podcast. So we are back, and I haven't been here in so... have haven't recorded one. Actually, we recorded one um, about... We recorded like three or four episodes, but it never made it to air uh, for some reason. I don't really quite know. But today we're doing episode number 32. This is going to be talking about Snow Leopard, WWDC 08, and the Apple iPhone and Mobile Me and all this other great stuff that came out. And I've got to say, um, even though we haven't produced an episode in a while, uh, subscribers have keep have just risen. And uh, we are still working on getting into iTunes and all that great stuff that we promised you a long time ago. And we're still... Still, still, still working on it. Okay, let's start out today. We are changing this. We're changing everything. Um, no commercials, uh, no Apple news and stuff like that. But we're going to go ahead and talk about it and go to our to our website, TalkingMac.tk, uh, for the extended episode of this. You can listen to everything, get the links to everything all right there. Now, this episode is brought to you by the Mac Tips and Tricks podcast. If you like everything Mac, and you want to know Mac Tips and Tricks, the latest news and software reviews, visit their website, mactipsandtricks.blip.tv. You can find it there. It's a free podcast, and you can also subscribe in iTunes and the Mirror Player. All right, let's talk about Snow Leopard first. Let's talk about Snow Leopard's Grand Central and OpenCL details. Now, Roughly Drafted provides a first eye view of key technologies coming in Mac OS X Snow Leopard 10.6. Now, Snow Leopard, as you probably heard, has dropped PowerPC support and also, yeah, so it'll only work on Intel and also will not have any big major new features. That's why it's called Snow Leopard instead of, you know, Lynx or something like that. Um, so there's a couple of new technologies in Snow Leopard. And first off is Grand Central. And the next off is OpenCL. Now, OpenCL is what's interesting to me. It will allow developers to pass off tasks to the computer's graphic, graphics processing unit. Um, so a lot of tasks that could be uh, for, for like your, your processor to handle can be passed off onto your GPU or your graphics processing unit to handle, which can add a lot of power. Let's also touch on Apple to release an iSight HD. Now, some people on the internet, you've probably seen this before, um, has found reference to the high-definition USB iSight camera in Apple's QuickTime system files. Now, the line is specifically labeled Next Generation USB iSight in QuickTime's localizable dot strings and also carries a reference of iSight HD. Now, we're not sure how old this reference is, but a quick Google search shows no previous discussion of it. Still, it remains possible that there could be an old reference to a project that is no longer planned. Now, to refresh your memory, the iSight was an external FireWire webcam that was sold from Apple between 2003 and 2006, and all of a sudden Apple stopped selling them when it started including iSights and everything except for the external cinema displays, which remain cameraless. And I was hoping to see a cinema display because I'm going to be upgrading here to Mac Pro. Uh, and two cinema displays, two 23 inches. And I wanted to see, um, well, I wanted to see uh, an eyesight camera. So I just, I just don't understand, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so let's talk about some of the rumors and stuff um, that did turn out. iPhone 3G, of course, $200, has 3G and GPS, and those front side of video camera, as far as we know, will be coming out July 11th. Now, all this Kevin Rose stuff, you know, dig.com, uh, what's the name of that show, screensavers, don't trust Kevin Rose. He's been wrong a lot of times, and was still wrong. Everybody could have told you $200 for an inclusion of GPS in the next iPhone. Everyone knows that. 
I'm uh, talking about two batteries and all this other junk video conferencing. Kevin Rose is a complete scam and a fraud. Don't listen to him. He's hasn't been right. He only states some of the obvious and other things that he states completely wrong and false. He just wants to get more traffic to his websites and stuff. So that's what he does. Okay. Snow Leopard will have a WWDC release of 2009. That is true. So if you're looking in the market for Snow Leopard and all that great stuff, let's talk about mobile media. Now, this is what has, this is what has, this, uh, I got my speech jumbled up here. This is what I am excited about. Uh, mobile me is replacing dot mac uh for ninety nine dollars a year and you can sync between your iphone ipod touch your mac and your pc also old dot mac user will be trans over transferred over to mobile me when it launches it'll launch in early july and it has a web version of mail calendars and contacts and looks similar to the desktop apps now it adds a lot of functionality where it's ex they call it exchange for the rest of us where everything is current is synced and up to date when you make it on your iPod Touch, your Mac, or your PC, or your iPhone. So this is great. This adds a lot of extra mo uh, features to Dot .Mac, and I probably will sign up for mobile me because I never did sign up for Dot .Mac. I never found anything useful. Um, so the i the the 2.0 software, iPhone 2.0 or whatever it's called, I don't know what it's called, uh, will be a ten dollar upgrade for the iPod Touch. Um, obviously because Apple doesn't. When they sell the iPod Touch, that's all they get. So there's this thing called um, this is USB dongle that allows you to install OS 10 on a regular PC. They're in the final testing phase right now. Again, go to overtalkingmac.tk. You can see our show notes over there. You can click on the link and go ahead and see what this is all about. And you can listen to this in the episode. We've gone for a long time talking about this great stuff. No tethering for the 3G iPhone. If you ever wanted to tether your 3G iPhone, well, the folks over at iPhone Atlas are reporting that AT&T is not planning to offer a tethering option for the forthcoming 3G iPhone, or as the name is iPhone 3G. That's a proper name. Uh, not third generation 3G. Right now, AT&T does offer the option for many of their 3G iPhones, which include and allow you to use your cell cellular modem on a laptop as part of a $65 a month data plan. Now, according to an AT&T spokesman, however, no such Phone is modem plan will be offered for the 3G iPhone, which absolutely sucks. It really does. Um, let's talk about Snow Leopard again, 10.6. If you were at the conference, you know that Snow Leopard was ceded to all the WWDC developers. So if you are, you are a developer at the Developer Connection at Apple, the Dev Center, go ahead and download that and get to working. Got a funny story here before we leave um, for the YouTube viewers. Uh, Apple forces bathroom escorts on WD WWDC reporters. Okay, so this is from Apple Insider. You can again go to our website talkmat.tk to click the link there. I keep giving it a lot. Of, a lot of people hate it, but you know, gotta get there. I'm not gonna know. Um, so Computer World's Matt Hamblin wrote a lengthy blog post on on the, on on the matter. He found it somewhat demoralizing and embarrassing, especially given that he was covering the conference on the secure press area that Apple itself had the opportunity to select and isolate more appropriately, if so. And uh, basically, he was they were claiming that um, uh, he walked up to the walk washroom and went to the bathroom, and somebody said, "No, no, 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 you can't go alone." Because Apple Steve Jobs and the G iPhone was somewhere within a 50 yard radius. So they're like, oh, hold on. we have to walk you to the restroom. We'll continue this story later um, on our extended episode. So go on over, type it in, talkingmac.tk. You're going to love the new Talk Mac. Subscribe, please. We will be getting an iTunes. Actually, go to our website and we will have an iTunes link. Go to our website, talkingmac.tk. We will have an iTunes link if you like subscribing through iTunes, and don't forget to visit our sponsor's website, Mac Tips and Tricks Podcast, at www.mactipsandtricks.blip.tv. And of course, if you got any emails, technifiedmedia at yahoo.com. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Talking Mac Podcast number 32. Remember to subscribe. We're going to put it out every single Sunday evening on the East Coast, so it might be early Sunday on the West Coast. And if you're out of the U.S., well, I don't know. I'm not counting. I'm not doing all that stuff. You just figure it out yourself. Just subscribe and you'll get it when it's ready. 